Hi everybody. Welcome to Tech Mentor Training. I want to thank you first for what you do for people with special needs and for your community. Today we're going to train you to use an assistive technology tool called MyGuide to help you be more effective in supporting the individuals you work with to be more independent. Let's begin with why my family created MyGuide. This is my son Dominic on the left when he graduated two years ago from Harrisonburg High with a standard diploma and with autism. And my other son Daniel on the right a year later when I asked him to drop out of college to help me full time with Empower Me. About the time I had mastered the IEP process, Dominic lost all special education supports and that meant I was going to lose my job because I couldn't leave the house before he was dressed, fed, and medicated and asking him to do any of those things caused a meltdown. I was a single, desperate mom. I tried everything. I looked everywhere, and I made no progress whatsoever until I turned to Daniel for help. Now, Daniel was born with severe vision impairment, and he wore glasses before he could sit up, and he was using a computer before he could walk. No exaggeration. By the time he was 14, he had created an app for Dominic to use so he could play Minecraft with his big brothers. He called it AltaCraft Guide. If Dominic wanted to build a fence in the game, he would tap the fence on the tablet and it would tell him to go get 10 bricks and add 12 buckets of mud and so on. And Dominic did it happily. Anything the app told him to do. So I recruited Daniel to help me build a different kind of guide for Dominic. One that would guide him through tasks like brushing his teeth and taking the meds that I put out for him. We started with tasks he could do himself, but he wouldn't do unless someone told him to do it in the right way at the right time. And I needed it to report back to me how his progress was going or if he had problems that I needed to help him with. So that way I could go to work and by the time I got there, I would get a notification on my phone that said he was dressed, medicated, had eaten waffles, and brushed his teeth without toothpaste. We kept improving it and testing it, and after two years and seven versions of my guide, we're now training tech mentors like you throughout Harrisonburg, the Shenandoah, and Northern Virginia to share this with other families just like ours. Empower Me is our company, and we have a single vision, and that's to establish technology parity. That is to make sure that technology actually benefits people with special needs as much as it does everyone else. Parity is not simply equality. Think of one of your clients. If you gave them your phone or your laptop for a day with all of your passwords, they would have equal technology but it wouldn't benefit them at all. A better way of demonstrating technology disparity is to consider how much you've relied on technology just to get here today to this training. Probably a calendar, maybe an alarm. How many emails did you get about it? And did you have to make any phone calls or arrangements to cover other responsibilities? Now, imagine you had none of that technology, no email, no calendar app, no cell phone, no GPS, would you have still made it here today? Would you be awake, alert, engaged, and ready to learn a new skill, whether you feel like it or not? My point is that being a successful adult would be much more difficult for you if you didn't have technology to help you. Now, imagine on top of not having any technology, you also had an intellectual disability or a developmental disability. That's technology disparity. That's what our individuals are facing today. All of this amazing technology is available, yet none of it benefits them. So this training is about how tech mentors can help us deliver the specialized technology-based solution that we've developed to empower individuals, their families, and their communities to increase their own self-sufficiency and self-determination. It's also going to help them improve the impacts of existing services and supports that they already have in place. Third, 
it's going to alleviate the shortage of human services, and finally, it's going to enable the use of standardized technology as a lifelong resource for all people with special needs. You may be familiar with how assistive technology supports physical disabilities, like a communication device that speaks for someone who's paralyzed, or text-to-speech that reads aloud written text for someone who's blind. And that's because really smart technologists know how to program computers to compensate for poor eyesight or for speech problems. But for cognitive disabilities, that is deficits in thinking, it's much more difficult because there are so many different types of brain-related disorders. And not only do these needs vary from disorder to disorder, like autism and Downs and cerebral palsy, they vary from person to person with the same exact disorder and even task to task for the same person. So we have to start with defining exactly what we want this assistive technology to do for people with ID and DD. Cognitive deficits include problems with comprehension, memory, decision-making, and also social emotional difficulties like self-monitoring and advocacy and communication. But if there's one universal symptom that's experienced by virtually all individuals with ID and DD, it's that they need to be prompted, reminded, or cued to do, think, and or communicate even if they've previously mastered doing it, thinking it, or communicating it. These symptoms are called prompt dependencies, and they are met almost entirely by human prompting from caregivers who are funded by government programs, medical insurance, and families. Human prompting is the most expensive and scarce resource that we have across any human services industry today. So we're going to show you how to program a mobile device to provide technological prompting instead of human prompting for a single individual. My guide offers customizable prompting for any activity or experience by a mobile device. Now, it's important for you to know that before we built My Guide, we researched and tested a multitude of apps for autism that claim to provide technological prompting. They fell far short of accomplishing our missions that we just talked about because they couldn't offer the level of customization by the individual. Highest levels of security, progress reporting with real-time notifications, or training and supports that the My Guide offers. So during this training, you're going to learn about what makes My Guide so very powerful and very unique. The software has two basic functions, though, that when personalized for each individual's needs, can supplement cognitive deficits by technological prompting. First, the lesson will prompt cognitive processes that would not otherwise occur because of the special need or the disability. And second, the lesson will offer opportunities to express thoughts, feelings, and activities in a unique way that they would not have otherwise. So now let's watch a demonstration of a student playing a lesson for folding laundry. Look for how the My Guide prompts her to think and do something, and then how she self-reports that she did it. This is a beginner lesson for an individual with ID. This student was referred by her day program. She wants to be more independent, to participate more fully in her own life. Can you tap that right there? Tech play. Mentor is helping her build skills for using any generalized technology. Okay. All right. I know. What's that? She recognized the hamper. She's learning to look to her My Guide to find instructions. And then hold herself accountable by checking off that she did it. Good job. And she gets Give immediate positive okay. reinforcement. Swipe. Good job. Okay, what is the next step that you have to do? Before we did this lesson, we were told she is not capable of folding clothes. That's right, you gotta lay it down flat. And she chose 
folding a shirt. It's the first lesson she wanted to do. Uh oh. It's okay. You got it. Here, I'll help you fold this over. Okay? All right. So you've laid it down flat. What do you need to do next? She refers back to her My Guide. She gets more thumbs up from Good SpongeBob. Good job. All right, you want to swipe it? Okay, what is the next step? From a picture do? that has a timer on it, she's reminded that she's supposed to fold in the sides. Right, the now, the first time she did this lesson, she needed a separate step for folding each side of the that? shirt. She actually went two steps. This back. time, really awesome. she did both ahead, sides before she swiped. Tap. SpongeBob giving you a thumbs up. She already did it. You can go ahead and tap that side because you did that too. And another thumbs up. All right, what's the next step? After you fold in the sides, what do you have to do next? Now she's remembered. Now in future versions of this My Guide lesson, we can collapse those steps. And so someday, one task in a My Guide lesson for her might be fold a shirt. She wants to continue to tap the lesson because she is positively energized by interacting with her device. Now she is explaining to a staff person that SpongeBob told her she did a good job folding her laundry. <laughs> My guide offers improved self-expression opportunities by prompting the user to express or report their thoughts or choices, feelings or symptoms, and activities or behaviors directly to their My guide. They can help them practice effective communication or provide a less intimidating or more appropriate way of processing their thoughts, feelings, and experiences. The tech mentor's role is to coach clients and their support systems to build their own self-help guides. Nearly all my guide building is prime, prompt, or review. Watch this tech mentor session with Heather that her day program staff asked me to provide on a day that she was so stressed out about going in for a procedure the following day. Watch how building a My Guide lesson became an intervention itself that allows her to review and express herself. She plays this lesson daily and she edits it weekly. So, so right now I'm actually building a lesson. No. Uh, when I get nervous, I can look at the twin towers. Turn off the microphone and hit the check mark. No, up here. Check my okay. Now you know, we got to put a picture, so hit the center button. Image. The twin towers. Tap the twin towers. When I get nervous, I can look at the twin towers. Awesome. Would you like it to read it to you out loud? Yes. Check that button. Check that many. Now, would you like to put the voice that it reads it to you in? Check or tap voice of my guide. I want it to read it to me in a soft voice. Okay, hit voice of my guide. Voice of my guide. I want it in English. These are all English. There's United Kingdom. No. There's United States. United States female. Yes. All right, watch this. Ready, watch. Guys, watch this. I do get them with the Alexa. Watch this. When I get nervous, I can call. Very good. That's a nice. Grant, did you hear that? When I get nervous, I can look at the Twin Towers. See, it just talked to me. No. 
when I get really stressed out, this I do a big ball. Oh, that's awesome. And you know what? If you hit this, this, this arrow, it will go to the Twin Towers. <laughs> Okay, I'm listening. I've got like three of them now, and I want you to listen to all three. Okay. All right, ready? Here they go. Would you like to have a better? So I can look at the Twin Towers. I've got three. Oh, when I get so excited, I don't want to confuse you. When I get really, really angry, and I get really, really mad and frustrated, I can look at the Twin Towers. The phone. Okay. Isn't that something? Yeah. What's a fact about the Twin Towers that makes you feel better when you're like this? I can definitely. The size. And how about? I can have the whole time. I. How about I love the size of the Twin Towers? They were very big and very beautiful. Well, this device will have to say. Well, man. What did you like most about a bank ball? Put your finger there. All right, now hit the microphone and answer the question. What I like most about a bag full is the, uh, is the size of the wheel and the way the wheel turns and the sound the door makes with, with all the locks going down and the thickness of the door. I think it is really cool. And I think the alarm is really cool as well. And I really, really love bank vaults. Okay, so hit the Twin Towers. Yep. All right. Edit. Edit. Big pencil. Edit. Swipe. Go to the next until you get to the Pentagon. All right. All right, I'm at the okay. Pentagon. Hit the microphone and tell me something about the Pentagon. The Pentagon is the biggest office building in the world. It has five rings in the Pentagon. The Pentagon is very huge. I've actually seen the side that got blown out on 9-11 on a fixed top back in 2004. And I, I really love the Pentagon. The Pentagon is one of my favorite buildings in the whole world. It makes me feel better just getting to talk about them. Can you tell? Yes. Can you tell them that how... I'm beginning to come out of my shell and I beginning noticed. to feel better. And I'm so glad. Getting to talk, just getting to talk about them. And yeah. Okay, let's go down the stairs. Is that easier? Yeah. One of the most rewarding parts of being a tech mentor is helping students realize what they like and dislike and how their brain thinks about things and that they are more important and more powerful than the device. These achievements are called self-determination, and that's the most important part of being a tech mentor. I want to give you some examples. Um, I'm using Dominic as an example because I have his permission to do it. Uh, he didn't like a picture that I chose for him for brushing his teeth, and it said, remember to use toothpaste, and he said it made him mad because it sounded like mom was talking to him. So he chose instead a picture of himself when he was little jumping on the bed. And I asked him why that reminded him to brush his teeth. And he said, because that's what I was supposed to be doing when you took the picture. <laughs> After two years of using his my guide, Dominic was able to stay with his grandma for two weeks, two hours away from home for a training program that he had been wanting to do. So now we're going to listen to Dominic talk about my guide in his own words. My brain works differently than some people. 
My guide lessons are built the way my brain thinks. My guide helps me be more independent by allowing me to make choices and reminds me of what to do if I ever get stuck on something. When I first wake up, I turn on my my guide. I use morning routine and I take my medicine. On each page, there is a set of instructions that can be customized that will help me complete whatever task it is. And when I'm finished with said step, I just swipe to the left and then it gives me a new step. And when I complete the task, it will send reports to my guide and my mom would get a notification that I did my goodness. It allows me to tell mom that I'm doing my stuff. I used to have mom annoy me. With my guide, she doesn't have to ask me. She doesn't have to drag me everywhere she goes because she will know that I'll be doing it or not. With my guide, if I don't feel like reading, there is a text-to-voice system that comes in real handy. It reads the instructions out loud to me with whatever voice settings I set it to. I can change the picture or the text for each instruction. On one of my tasks, I have a list box that asks me what condiments I want to use. But instead of condiments, I put yesdiments because my favorite word is yes. I can build lessons to help me with really anything. I have cleaned my room, grocery list, morning routine, laundry, parts of my job. I was doing some stuff in Richmond that was really far away. It functioned just as it did at home. I use my guide to be more independent. We call them students, whether they're individuals, clients, patients, because they're learning how to use technology as a resource. And we have the 60-40 rule. Playing my guide lessons increases independence and self-sufficiency about 40% of the success that we see is from playing my guide lessons. But it's actually personalizing lessons, including learning task analysis and step-by-step -step instructions and self-accountability and self-expression. That's where we really see the self-determination. And that's the 60% of the successes we see. This is really hard to accomplish with this population. And the MyGuide platform really is a game changer for the industry because it empowers individuals to design their own lessons, their own guides, and to track and share their own progress with anyone they choose. Empower Me tracks utilization with time and date stamps for every single screen they look at, every question they answer or don't answer. This is all brand new, and we're all learning as we go. There are three ways that tech mentors can help individuals with special needs use this new innovative technology-based intervention. First, you can provide direct tech mentor coaching. Second, you can build MyGuide lesson elements for a library, like pictures or questions and response options or maybe video clips that any student can use and personalize. And finally, you can train the other people in your students' lives, like their family members, their teachers, or others in the community, to use my guide and to practice self-determination. Welcome to my guide, a technology-based self-determination intervention developed by a Virginia family searching for do-it-yourself caregiving tech tools. Together with clinicians and service providers, they developed my guide to empower individuals to design their own digital guides for activities and experiences. In 2020, they released version 10 across Android, iOS, Amazon, and Microsoft platforms. It is the most powerful, secure, and customizable supportive technology available today. This video highlights three key capabilities that are most often cited as game changers for families and professionals alike because progress can be shared in real time with anybody the individual chooses. The MyGuide system allows users many options for accessing simple or detailed step-by-step -step digital guides precisely where and when they need it. Somebody was having to remind me to take my meds before. Now I have it to where it's set up, where I have an alarm that will go off to remind me to take my medicine. They can tap a guide in the MyGuide app to play it from a library or 
a pop-up invitation based on a geographic location or calendar event. They can also tap their device on a My Guide NFC sticker to launch a guide. My Guide provides users with interactive guides that can prepare them for an experience or prompt them with images and audio recordings related to any activity, thought process, or emotional experience. From taking medication or personal hygiene, to choosing a meal or selecting clothing, to reporting symptoms or expressing feelings, My Guide is fully customizable and personalizable. How are you feeling now? Happy. Secure customization is clinically sound, technologically enabled task analysis. These guides are designed to be easily customized for the user. Everything from colors, pictures, to the text such as questions, choices, and status. My Guide includes sensory-specific settings available on your device, like touch to speak and sounds and vibrations on touch. By signing in to their own My Guide account, designated mentors can securely view the progress of multiple users in real time from any internet connection device anywhere on the planet. They can tap on any current user session to watch in real time as they progress through the guide, including user entered responses. They can also change their settings to be immediately notified if a user chooses a specific response option such as, I need help. My Guide data can be tracked and analyzed over time by user, by guide, or groups of users such as classroom or day support program or group home or a job site.